Have you ever looked at your robot and wonder how it actually moves? I mean, how does it walk? How does it crawl? How does it lift objects and even wave at you? It's definitely not just the codes or the wires, right? A robot does all its movements with the help of something called actuators. And this is one of the most important part of a moving robot. Without actuators, a robot is just a metal box without any kind of movements. When you add actuators, it comes alive. In this video of Robotics Tutorial for Beginners video series, we will see what actuators are, how they work and why it is very important for you to learn about actuators if you are really serious about robotics. And guys, if you are really into robotics and electronics, make sure you check out our channel. You will find a lot of useful videos there. Let's think of our body. We have a brain that does all the thinking and processing, but it's our muscles that do all the movement. In the same way, a robot has a microcontroller or a small computer that does all the thinking based on the information collected from different sensors in the robot. But it's the actuator that does all the physical work. Actuators are the muscles of our robot. Without actuators, your robot can't move, grab, push, pull or even blink. No matter how smart your code is, it won't mean anything unless you can turn those signals into motion. That's what actuators do. They make your robot come to life. Basically, an actuator is a device that takes energy, basically in the form of electrical energy, and convert it into some kind of mechanical movement. In simple terms, electrical energy to physical motion. And this physical motion can be anything. It can be lifting, pushing, pulling, walking, or any kind of physical motion. Whenever you want your robot to do any kind of physical work, you will need some kind of actuator in your robot. And selection of the actuators is crucial because if you're choosing the wrong one, the robot might not be able to do what you want your robot to do and you could mess up your whole project. Now, let's see some of the most common actuators that we use in robots. The first one would be DC motor. DC motors are one of the most common actuators that we can see in beginner level robots. We can use DC motor to spin wheels or fans or rotate discs. They are simple, cheap and easy to control using a simple DC voltage. But when we are using this DC motor in a robot, to control the DC motor, we can typically connect it to a H-bridge motor driver circuit like L2983D or L2981, which allows us to control both speed and direction through PWM signals or pulse width modulated signals from your microcontroller. We have created a simple robot using Arduino and DC motor and I will link this video in the description down below. If you are interested, make sure you check it out. Next, we have brushless DC motor or BLDC motor. They are more powerful and efficient when compared to normal brushed DC motor and they are often used in high-speed robots, drones or e-bikes. Instead of brushes, they use electronic circuits to switch the current, making them more durable and faster. Now, controlling a brushless DC motor is a little bit more complicated than controlling brushed DC motor. In order to control a brushless DC motor, you will need something called an ESC, that is an electronic speed controller. That will be connecting the battery, the motor and the microcontroller that will be controlling the speed and direction. One thing I forgot to mention is, we have different types of actuators and each of them have their own unique way of being controlled. For each of the actuators, we use a different circuit. Circuits play a very important role in robotics. In fact, they are one of the four key pillars of robotics. Now, speaking about circuits, let me introduce you to Altium, a powerful schematics and PCB design tool that can really help you in the field of robotics and electronics, who is the sponsor of this video. If you watch our videos, you know we use a tool called Atium for most of our robotics projects to draw our circuits and design our own PCBs. It's easy to create our own PCBs using Atium. And if you are a DIY electronics enthusiast, you are going to love it. An Atium subscription includes something called Atium 365, which lets you design, share and manufacture your project everything in one place. You can even collaborate on your circuit with friends and share real-time feedback. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description so you can download and try it for yourself. Next, we have the servo motor. Let's say you want your robot or a part of your robot to be moved in a specific angle, we could use servo motor. For example, let's say you want your robot arm to move 90 degrees. 
In that case, we can connect that robotic arm to a servo motor and program the servo motor to move 90 degrees. A servo motor contains a motor, a set of gears and a feedback system that helps them rotate to a precise position. A servo motor usually moves from 0 to 180 degrees. A servo motor has three pins. One will be power that will be connected to 5 volt. The second will be ground that will be connected of course to the ground and then we have the signal pin where we will be feeding a pulse width modulated signal and based on the pulse width of this pulse width modulated signal we can control the angle in which the shaft is rotating we have a full video where we explain everything you need to know about servo motors and we will link that video in the description down below and then we have stepper motor stepper motor is more or less similar to a servo motor it allows us to move a robot or a part of robot in specific angle but the advantage of stepper motor is it allows us more precise control of the robot or the robotic part like 1.8 degree per step and can rotate forward or backward with incredible accuracy they are commonly used in 3d printers cnc machines and robots that need fine control in multiple directions Stepper motors are controlled using stepper motor driver modules like A4988 or DRV8825. These modules can be connected to your Arduino and the stepper motor and we can program the Arduino to drive the stepper motor the way we want precisely. Now, let's talk about pneumatic and hydraulic actuators. These are more commonly used in industrial robots rather than hobby projects. Pneumatic actuators use compressed air to move things while hydraulic actuators use pressurized fluid. They are powerful and can lift heavy loads, but they are bulky and complex, making it not suitable for hobby projects. These actuators are usually controlled using electromechanical valves, which can be triggered by the microcontroller through a transistor or relay circuit to allow or block fluid or airflow. So these are the most common actuators that we can see in the robots. Now, the question is, how do you choose the right actuator for your robot? Well, it actually depends on the purpose. If you want fast spinning wheel or a fan, go with a DC motor. If you want your robot arms to move to a certain position and stop there, use the servo motor. For high precision control where each tiny movement matters, a stepper motor is your best friend. And if you are working on a big industrial project that needs a lot of force, pneumatic or hydraulic actuators are the way to go. The key is understanding your robot's job and picking the actuator that fits the best. Now, let's go to the next video where we'll be creating a simple robot using DC motor and Arduino microcontroller.